uh, what is nanotechnology? The first thing is, of course, that in Greek, nano means dwarf. So basically, it's dwarf technology. But in science, it means 10 to the minus 9. So it is the technology where the organization on the nanometer scale, on the 10 to the minus 9 meter scale, is important for the properties. Properties should be different from the bulk. So that is nano. Now, what is technology? Of course, technology, it actually means that you have a application, endeavor, that you make money with it. It is the application of knowledge. If you talk about technology, then it implies that you can basically make a product that works, that you can buy somewhere. Okay, we are also, not only, but also mainly talking about nanoscience, nanomaterials. Also, the, the Nobel Prize was given to, uh, in 2016 to the people for their science on the nanoscale, making a motor on the nanoscale. I don't think that they are involved in technology, as far as I know, but maybe they have spin-off companies. And they're certainly, it certainly has possibility of application to make really a product, but that is something a little bit different. But if we talk now about the technology, and indeed, as we saw before, it is organization of structures that are on the nanoscale important for the properties and the properties are different from the bulk the nanostructure should induce new properties that were not present in the bulk material so you all know the the micro technology from the microchips and the micro mechanics and you also know the nano dimension well, this is a picture uh, with which you can basically explain your grandmother what you are working on, your molecules. The ratio of the diameter of a small football relative to the diameter of the earth, that ratio is the same as going from the small ball to a molecule. 10 to the power 8 vector. And that tells you something about the dimension. And uh, nanotechnology is also related to two methods, so top-down and bottom-up. So the top-down is basically lithography. If you take a large material and you start cutting it smaller and smaller, you can make very, very small objects. And if you use light to do that with lithography, then you can go to very, very small. The other way is bottom-up, so that is using molecules to organize structures and thereby come to, well, maybe even the same dimension. So we have nanoscale lithography, this is going from the bulk to smaller and smaller, and we have molecular approach, the bottom-up approach, that is making small structures from molecules. Molecular assembly. Okay, another question that I would like to ask you. So if I say nanotechnology, are there any, okay, besides uh, the Nobel Prize winners we just mentioned, are there any other names that come to your mind? Who made the foundation, who came up with the foundations of nanotechnology? A very, very famous person, but it is a physicist, a physicist. Any ideas? No? Okay, you, you, we have seen these names, but the, the one that came up with the concept is Feynman. So he gave in 1995, he gave a very famous lecture. There's plenty of room at the bottom. And basically, first, he was the first person to show the vision that you could build up a material atom by atom. And maybe, okay, he, he basically thought about the machines that make smaller and smaller machines. There's plenty of room at the bottom. So basically using atoms to put them on defined positions, that is what he thought about as the first person. It was a vision. Taniguchi, he basically came up with the name, the name nanotechnology, which uh, sounds nice. There's also Drexler. Now, Mr. Drexler, he wrote a very nice book about basically about molecular motors and molecular machines. But it was only pictures and was not really practical. He did not work 
on making molecules, but he drew them. So for instance, he was the one that basically connected a host gas system. So here we see a molecular host system like a psychodextrin or something. And here's a gas. So if you put them together, you get a complex, but you can consider this com complex also as an axle and a wheel. So in principle, you can make an analogy to a wheel and an axle and a molecule. Drexler was the first to think of uh, in this direction. And that is, of course, what Feringa realized in a car, in a molecular car. So this is another vision of Mr. Drexler. I don't exactly know what this molecule does. It's like a gearbox consisting of molecules. So he was able to draw very fancy molecules that had an analogy to microscopic objects. But it was only a vision. Also, Feynman, he gave a vision. He, he thought about putting atoms really place by place next together to make something. But they, so these people, they were very creative. They were very creative people who came up with new ideas. Other people realized them. But so that also shows you that creativity in science is very important. But as we said, this was all virtual. It was just ideas. It's a very funny uh, gearbox also made in a computer, but not in reality. Now, but if we talk about nanotechnology, nanotechnology is real, it is reality. What made nanotechnology become reality? That is the next question. And again, eh, if you have a suggestion, just put on your audio and say something, then So what made nanotechnology become reality? I would say that there's three important things. The first thing is the scanning tunneling microscope. They also got the Nobel Prize for developing this, Binnen uh, Röhre from IBM, so from a company. So they developed it in 1982. And this is a microscope that can visualize on the atomic level. If you're able to study the, at the, the structure at the atomic level, that is a first step. A second component that's very, very important for nanotechnology is carbon nanotubes. After the invention of the fullerenes, which also got the Nobel Prize, they went on with this research and found carbon nanotubes. So it's like a tube consisting of carbon, like an elongated C60 molecule. Carbon nanotubes are a very important player in nanotechnology. One more thing that is Moore's law. So the reduction of the size in computer chips. The Moore's law predicted that you will go to a nanoscale or sub 100 nanometers. And this was a big driving force. So we have to control matter below the 100 nanometer scale in order to make better computers. So that is a huge, uh, uh, impetus.